Uh, hi, uh, I'm Yao. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Bloomberg Data Science Platform team. So, yeah, and this is Yifan. I'm also a software engineer on the Data Science Platform team at Bloomberg. So, okay, so um, Bloomberg headquartered in the New York City. Uh, it's a global finance, medium, and technology company. And we have dedicated AI teams, and we, they convert their results in the Bloomberg uh, terminal products. So in the earlier of this year, uh, we just announced the availability of AI-powered earning calls uh, summary on the Bloomberg terminals. So our data scientists adore the Jupyter Notebook because they can uh, explore their data set and produce their models in an interactive way. Um, however, it will also bring security vulnerabilities such as unauthorized access and data breaches. So in this talk, we are going to share our experience about securing a Jupyter Notebook uh, using Istio OPA and also network, uh, Calico network policies. So first, uh, first, let me give you a quickly introduction introduction of our data science platform at Bloomberg. So we build our data science platform on top of Kubernetes. Uh, it offers data exploration like Jupyter Notebook and Spark, uh, model training like Py uh, PyTorch and TensorFlow, and the model serving using KServe. So our notebook clusters are integrated with several um, data storage within Bloomberg. So like, like we show here, uh, for example, we have S3 compatible object storage and Hadoop. So um, for those uh, data storage or data sources, uh, we have in-house credential management to secure the production data access. Uh, in this talk, however, we are not talking about those credential management. Uh, instead, we are going to focus on the secured ingress and the egress. So uh, in order to... Uh, in order to understand why security um, matters here. So let's imagine a very simple use case. Say we have Ifan, uh, he is from the data science platform team. Uh, he want to, uh, he creates a Jupyter Notebook on our uh, Jupyter Notebook cluster and in his, uh, in the team's uh, namespace called DSP. So, um, and he want to use this notebook to access some production uh, data storage. So such a, such a very simple use case, right? Uh, but it will, it will like incur uh, multiple security issues. So, uh, so, so first, uh, how do we know that if I is really who claims to be? So it is an authentication problem and then Secondly, um, it's even allowed to access uh, the Jupyter no Notebook URL and the use the notebook created in the DSP namespace and running on our notebook cluster. So that is an authorization uh, question. And third, uh, is this notebook allowed to access the production uh, data uh, object storage? Uh, this is more about egress control. So now I'm going to turn it over to Yifan. He will tell the stories about our secure ingress control. Thank you, Yao. So um, how do you address these security issues? So the first is, is Yifan really who he claims to be? This is an authentication problem. So this, our solution is that we build a single sign-on system based on OAuth2, and we deploy an OpenID Connect, which is OIDC for short. Uh, we deploy such a proxy that handles the SSO callback, and it verifies that the token is valid, and then routes the request to the next component. So when a user opens the URL of a notebook, um, the request goes into an Istio gateway that is deployed in the Istio system namespace. This Istio gateway is connected to an Istio virtual service that is deployed in the DSP tenant namespace. Uh, this virtual service is again connected to a uh, cluster IP service that is in another ne namespace called network proxy. And this cluster IP service will route the request to a pod called network proxy. This network proxy will first check whether the request has an uh, JWT token in the, the request authorization header. And if the request does not have such a 
valid token, it will redirect the user to the external SSO provider's login page where the user needs to enter its login credentials and typically just a username and password. Uh, when the user is successfully logged in, uh, the SSO provider will send a JWT token back to the network proxy pod and the network proxy pod will verify its validity and if it's valid, it will set this JWT token in the request authorization header. After that, the network proxy pod will send the request back to another cluster IP service that is also in the DSP namespace. This cluster IP service job is to expose the actual Jupyter Notebook pod. Uh, but instead of going directly into the notebook container, there is another Istio sidecar container that also lies in the Jupyter Notebook pod and it captures this request. Uh, the Istio sidecar tries to authenticate this request by looking for an re Istio request authentication that is also uh, configured in the Istio system. And this is installed during the initialization of this cluster. And in this request authentication, we specify that the request needs to have a bearer prefix and it must be issued by the issuer called .bloomberg.com. And if the requests have both uh, met, uh, fulfills uh, both these uh, requirements, then we think that this requ uh, request is successfully authenticated. So now we have addressed the first issue. The second one is, is Ifan allowed to access the notebook? And this is an authorization problem. And to answer this question, we uh, configured uh, authorization policies in the principal action and resource format, and we store it in a custom policy store. Principal basically means who is performing the action, and typically it's just a user or a role account. An action means what kind of action is the principal allowed to perform. Uh, for example, it can be read or write. And resource means what resource is the principal allowed to perform the action on. And typically, it's just um, a no Jupyter notebook in our case. So in the bottom left corner, you can see an example of such a policy. Uh, the principal is set to LDAP group data science platform, which uh, represents the entire DSP team. An action is hard-coded to access. A uh, resource is set to such a format that cluster, notebook cluster, namespace, DSP star. So notebook cluster is the name of the cluster where the notebook is running. DSP is the namespace where the notebook is launched. And star basically means every resource in this namespace. And we store such a policy in the policy store. And besides the policies, we also leverage several functionalities provided by Istio and OPA, Open Policy Agent, to help us build this authorization system. And to further take a look at this system, uh, we have an OPA bundler which periodically pulls the policies from the policy store. And the OPA bundler will pack all these policies into a huge JSON file together with a regal file which tells how to authorize a request against the pre-configured policies. And the OPA bundler will put the, uh, the things together inside a tar file and serve them as an OPA bundle. And we also have an OPA server which periodically pulls the bundles from the OPA bundler. And this is a uh, detailed explanation of how the OPA bundle looks like. So in this data.json file, on the right side, we can see that uh, basically it just consists of uh, JSON items. And one item looks like this. It's a key value pair. And the key is the LDAP user ifan, which represents ifan, the user. And the value is another key value pair. The key is access, which is uh, the same as the action we configured in policy. And the resource is also the same as the resource in the policy, uh, cluster, nope, cluster, uh, namespace, DSP star. So we can no it's worth noticing that uh, the OPA bundler expands the LDAP group the data science platform into a list of LDAP users and put them in this JSON file. And here is what the regal code looks like. Uh, what it does is quite simple. So first, it imports the 
uh, the data.json file we've just seen into this regal. And then it is, tries to extract the principal action and resource headers from the incoming request. And we'll cover how these headers are set in later. And finally, it tries to find a policy in the data.json file that can match the given principal action and resource. And if there is such a match, it will set the allow field to true and basically means that the request is successfully authorized. So let's move back to this diagram. Uh, we have talked about how the SDO sidecar works in the authentication process. And in authorization, it is also a key component. So here we add a WebAssembly plugin to this SDO sidecar using an SDO Watson plugin resource. What this WebAssembly plugin does is that it takes an HTTP request as input. And as we know that the request has an authorization header, which is set by the network proxy pod. And this, ha uh, this authorization header has a JWT token in its value. And the token ha contains some basic information about the user, for example, the username. And the WebAssembly plugin will extract this username from the unmarshaled uh, JSON payload and set it in the output request's principal header. And uh, in the incoming request header, we also have a, such an author authority header, which is uh, equal to the URL that is being requested. And this is set by the browser. So in the URL, we have th such information as the name of the notebook, which is JUP Yifan. And we also have DSP, which is the namespace of uh, where the notebook is running, and the name of the cluster, which is notebook cluster. So the WebAssembly plugin is then able to reconstruct the resource identifier from the uh, input uh, request. And uh, so here, as we can see here, the uh, resource is cluster, notebook cluster, namespace, DSP, JUP, Yifan. So um, and uh, the action field is hard coded to access. So let's move back to this diagram. Uh, when a request uh, comes into the SDO sidecar and finishes the authentication process, um, uh, the SDO actually has no idea about the OPA server and or how to use this OPA server for authorization. So here comes our Envoy filter. An Envoy filter allows you to um, customize the, the Envoy configuration generated by SDO Pilot. And in our case, we use such an Envoy filter to tell SDO that you need to delegate the authorization to an external service, which is the OPA server. So the incoming request will be routed to this OPA server by the SDO sidecar. And inside the OPA server, it runs the regal code we just seen and uh, tries to find a match uh, policy that can match the given request. So here, uh, we do have such a match. And uh, yeah, so the OPA server will say, yes, this request is successfully authorized, and return the decision back to the Isto sidecar container. Once the Istio sidecar receives such a positive uh, decision, it uh, regard the request as successfully authorized and will re redirect the, route, uh, the request to the actual notebook container in this pod. So the user is finally able to see the notebook open in the browser. So if we need to put uh, all these things into this bigger picture, when a request comes into the SDO sidecar and finishes the authentication process, um, it, it will go through the, uh, 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 the WebAssembly plugin to get the additional headers patched. And then the SDO sidecar container will route the request to the OPA server. And if the OPA server says, yes, this request is authorized, the SDO sidecar will route the request to the Drupal notebook container, and the, the user is that now able to open their uh, notebook. So that's all for authorization. And uh, uh, let me hand over back to Yao to cover the egress control part.
Okay, so finally, uh, we come to the last question. Uh, is notebook to be able to access our production data storage? So our, so actually, our notebook cluster running in production is actually in the production network. So it is by default to access all the production data set. So uh, some data set is fine. So user they can. Um, Inter in you use notebook uh, to interactively access those data set. However, some data set are very restrictive. Even the teams and the users, they are allowed or they have full access to those data set. They are not allowed to access those data set interactively, say, using notebook. So in order to protect those uh, very sensitive production data, uh, we decide to use the Calico network policy to control our egress. So here, I just show a very simple example. Uh, so in the left, uh, so in this corner, uh, we have the global network set. So can you hear? Yeah. So uh, here, uh, you will see there's an annotation. It's our machine group annotation. So basically, this network um, global network set just represents all the machines uh, that runs the object storage services. So we also have a CIDR resolver. Uh, you can think it's a long running service. So this CIDR resolver just watches the network set and it try to parse and understand this machine group annotation and then auto populates the machine IPs into this network set. And then uh, we also have the global network policy. So the Calico network policy is actually, uh, you can think it's a group of Kubernetes network policy. You can define the ingress and the egress control. So here I just show the example of egress. Um, basically, uh, the first rule we define here is to allow the outbound traffic to the object storage. And by the end, uh, oh, the port is also default for 443. And then at the end, we put a like default deny, which means like we will ban all the outbound traffic except the access to this object storage. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, those uh, policy and network set are saved in the Calico XCD. And then we have the uh, Calico Cube controller. It synchronizes all the policies and the network set and then uh, and sync that to the Calico node. So the Calico node is actually a daemon set running on, on, our, on all the Kubernetes worker node. And it try to understand the network policy and translate that into the host machine IP tables. And thus, it can achieve the egress control. So, uh, let's put the last piece in this uh, huge diagram. So we have uh, defined our network policy and network set. So they are saving XCD and the, the, the Calico node, they just translate those rules uh, into the IP table rules and we achieve the uh, egress control. So you may also find that uh, that is all L4 uh, level and how about L7 uh, egress control. So uh, we are planning we're still like uh, planning to use the uh, Calico network policy uh, plus Istio to, age, to achieve L7 uh, control, but still like work in progress. So yeah, that's basically all we have. Yeah. So in summary, we have uh, SSL based on OAuth2 for authentication, and we have a custom policy store, and it's still an OPA for authorization system, and we have Cal Calico for to build our L4 egress control. And uh, that's it for today's presentation. And thank you all for interest in this topic, and thank you all for attending. Yeah. Minutes for questions. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry there. <laughs> uh, yeah, we have a uh, few minutes for questions, folks. If you've got any, go ahead and raise your hand, and we'll come around with the mic. Hi. Nice presentation. Uh, do you use Jupyter Hub for uh, notebook ser uh, serving or just plain notebook? We, we use Jupyter Server, not Jupyter Hub. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hi, uh, may I inquire that uh, how, much, how much cluster do you uh, okay for this O2 uh, combination? Because I think it is easy, uh, well, server the Compute resource very very heavy. 
Oh, so yeah. Uh, so for our use case, we have like dedicated notebook cluster. So basically, on that notebook cluster, we only allow user to run the notebook. So you mean the compute resource competing issue? Do you mean the GPU things or like the what kind of? Yeah, GP, uh, network and like uh, memory and uh, CPU. Yeah, GPU is is fine. Uh, so basically, our strategy is like uh, we we are multi-tenant uh, platform. So uh, each team they have their allocated resource. So we just they just allow to use uh, the budget they uh, they submit like every year. So they are not allowed to use more than uh, those kind of like memory when they start a notebook. Yeah. So. Get it. Thank you. So thank you for the presentation. Very interesting. Um, so in Jupyter Hub, there is, it is heavily customizable, and there is a, a way to add an authenticator. We connected with LDAP, for instance, and uh, doing all the authentication and authorization directly in the Jupyter Hub. Uh, why? Uh, why did you choose to use Istio and all the the WebAssembly and OPA and not just the Jupyter Hub uh, authenticator? Is there a reason or? Uh, yeah, there there's another reason. Like we build this whole framework because um, I, I think it's more like a standard authentication and author, authorization problem on the cloud. So uh, those like uh, those flow or you think this big picture will also be applied to other uh, our platform UI like the Spark history and uh, uh, TensorFlow, t t uh, sorry, TensorBoard. So that is why we designed the whole thing and it will be applied on multiple different uh, UI application on our platform. So yeah, I, I know like Jupyter Hub, they, they also provide this like rich features, uh, but yeah, it's like we, we shared this, the whole, whole framework, yeah. Hey, hello, yeah. So uh, thank you for sharing. Uh, just a question about the egress uh, part for layer four. Uh, any reason to choose um, Cardico? In my understanding, Cilium may be a little bit simpler in the use case. Uh, yeah, that's another interesting. Uh, so yeah, this is like the technical decision because we use the Calico for our CNI. So it's like we build up of the container network things on top of that. And then, uh, yeah, then if we use the Calico CNI and we use the BGP and all those things together, then the network policy will be like very natural choice for us for the egress control. Although I know L7 is not here, but we can still rely on Istio to help us achieve that. Yeah. I, I know like Cilium is like another option. Uh, I mean, in the future we can we can try things in that direction. Yeah. Change it, yeah. right? Unless you so, have a need to change it. Yeah, then that will be a huge change for our platform and then, yeah. yeah. So. Uh, any other questions? All right, I don't see any other hands up. Uh, please uh, give them a round of applause for a great job. <laughs>